What's up everybody, Mr. Played Out of Gaming here. Back with another video for y'all today. And today we're gonna be talking about Overwatch 2 Season 4. As y'all all know, Overwatch 2 Season 4 is on the horizon and Overwatch 2 Season 3 is about to be gone. So today we're gonna be looking over some stuff for the upcoming season. And before we get into today's video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and ring the notification bell for more videos. So anyway, let's get right into it, shall we? Okay, for this portion of the video, we're going to discuss the new character Life Weaver and his abilities. So anyway, let's get started. For Life Weaver, first ability, we got Healing, Healing Blossom. Healing Blossom is an ability that Life Weaver possesses where he can heal, he can heal his teammate by, do, by performing a burst heal. And this burst heal heals your teammate for the amount you hold down the button for. So if you hold down the firing button for a less amount of time, then your teammate will get less healing. But if you hold the healing button for a longer time, your, your teammate will get a, long, a higher burst heal. The burst heal can only go to 65, which I think is kind of crazy because not only that, Life Weaver can't really heal as fast. If you do decide to spam heal, you still ain't gonna be healing that much damage. So Life Weaver kind of plays more like an off healer than anything. Because Life Weaver's biggest strength comes from the utility that he brings to the team. Life Weaver healing capability is not really all that good. It's what utility that this dude brings to the team which I've been discussing in a minute. So, Life Weaver primary fire is called Thorn Valley. Thorn Valley kind of worked like Soldier and SMG where it got it got spread and plus it's a projectile weapon. So, with spell with Life Weaver, you kind of gonna have to bird kind of bird fire from long ranges. You really can't spam it. And plus you gotta lead your shot as well to order to get the maximum accuracy available. And in his thorn valley, his, th his thorn volley does like five points of damage to the body and ten points of damage to the head. So yeah, that hit. So that is spell weaver maximum output. And as you see it on stream right now, you can say the, that that um primary fire got a good fire rate as well. Like thorn volley is a very fast moving projectile, and I believe it's very, very good when it comes to like warning off flankers and all the other stuff. So. I think this primary fire is gonna be decent for trying to get rid of like tracers, McCrees, or any other flank flanking flanking type DPSs. Or it probably can either get rid of Genjis or try to fight off Genjis as well. So I think Thorn Valley is a decent primary fire. I don't think it's I don't think it looked terrible. I think it get the job it would get the job done in most situations. But I don't think it's gonna be very good when it comes to take on like tanks and stuff. Well, he's a healer, so you don't supposed to be doing it in the first place. That's kind of like a DPS job, but still though. I think I think Storm Valley is gonna be like a solid primary fire. So yeah, let's get to his next abilities as well. Another one of Life Weaver's abilities is Pella Platform. Pella Platform is an ability where Life Weaver throws out this pedal. Is this pedal is at more like an elevator where if an enemy player or ally steps on this platform, it will automatically rise up. So this so this ability is very good when you try and get to like high ground or get one of your ally up to a higher ground or as you see in a trailer at one point when he were first revealed, it actually show you how can you counter enemy ultimate with this ability. For example, everybody know Arisa Terror Surge. Well, let's say the Arisa Terror Surge, she uses her Terror Surge, right? And you got a Life Weaver on your team, and he throws out his Pell Platform. So now, the, the Arisa Terror Surge is completely useless because instead of killing killing your teammate, she gonna just destroy the platform. So Pell Platform can have some great play potential when it comes to this ability. Which I, which I, that's why I say Life Weaver is more of a util character than an actual healer. Like he is very, very, he is very, very utility based. Even though, for, for some strange reason, 
he is classified as a main healer, which I don't understand. Like, I don't know why the game kind of classified Life Weaver as a main healer. Because, to be honest with you, I think Life Weaver healing ability is not his main point. He he just offer utility, which then his strong suit. So I see with Life Weaver, you either you gonna have to run a main healer, so you are gonna have to run a Mercy, Ana. Or uh, you had to run a Mercy, Honor, or Baptiste, one of three, to make Life Weaver viable. Cause I don't think he's gonna be valuable on his own. So yeah, Life Weaver, the game classified him as a main healer, but being you, he more of an off healer. So yeah, we're gonna just classify Life Weaver as an off healer because he really don't do a lot of healing. So yeah, that that's that's one of his abilities. So let me move on to the next ability, which is. Rejuvenating Dash. With this ability, you can dash toward the direction you are traveling, and you can heal yourself for a small. You can heal yourself for a small amount of HP. So this ability is more like a traditional like get out of the way move, like McCree roll, or any other movement ability in Overwatch. So it's just a simple dash. You really ain't nothing to it. You like just dash away out of enemies and attacks. So you really got nothing too much say about this ability right here. Cause it's just a dash, and it's just a dash that heals you a little bit. So, yeah, it ain't really too much say. It ain't really, it ain't really too much to say about rejuvenating dash. But we're gonna move on to his next ability, which is life grip. Which I can either see people hating this ability or loving this ability, because this ability has huge trolling potential. Like, dude, if, if you got one of those trolls on your teammate that ain't taking ain't uh, taking the game seriously, or just want to ruin your time playing Overwatch, they can go Life Weaver and they can just pull you off the map, or they can just or they can um, pull you out of a, pull you out of a play you were trying to execute. For instance, imagine you you were trying to do like a um, flank as Tracer. Imagine that Life Weaver. Just pulls you out of position. Let's say you let's say you were going for like a Zenyatta or something, or you were going for the back like they back line, and life we would just pull you out of the way. Like dude, like dude, that would be awful because that is like a huge troll. Because now you just putting your team at a disadvantage because that tracer was going to take care of the enemy back line, or when a, if a Genji managed to get a um, good dragon blade off, and the life we would just pulls them out. And just interrupting his blade so life grip i can see having some good value on paper but at the same time if you get a player that want to be a complete and other butthole this ability can this ability can really 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 make really can be frustrating for other players so it's a very debatable ability which i can't really find another way how blizzard can fix this ability because Another another way I think they can fix this ability is they should have like a um button you can press as the character getting life grip and you can just escape the life grip without having to without having to um fully complete the information because let's be honest with ourselves we're gonna have they're gonna be they're gonna be a bunch of players that are gonna be doing this where they're gonna be trolling their teammates and just pull them out of situation where they really didn't need saving from and they just mess up plays and stuff. Or you get a life we read just completely, completely don't know what they're doing. They can really mess up your they really can mess up the floor of the game in my opinion, which which I, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about life grip being honest with you. I think life grip can have good potential, but it's just the fact that you that the fact that some players just will just ruin your fun and just grab you back. Yeah, that's the only that's the only problem I can see with this ability. Okay, up to the next one. And finally, time to discuss Life Weaver's ultimate, Tree of Life, which is place a tree that instantly heals ally upon sprouting and continue to heal periodically as it's lived. So basically with this ultimate, this is the first ultimate I believe in Overwatch 2 that actually has a health bar because when you summon the Tree of, tree of Life, which is Life Weaver ultimate, it doesn't, it doesn't just disappear. Like the enemy team has to kill that tree for that ultimate to go away. This is the first ultimate in Overwatch where you actually had to take it down. So, so basically, this tree of life heals your teammate 
upon summoning and also heals your teammate every once in a while so this ultimate can be real good if if you like in a pinch you need to get in your team to be healed up but at the same time it still revives healing as it sit there so the enemy literally had to sit there and destroy it for you to have for it for it to um to disappear because it would not disappear let it destroy it so yeah this is the first ultimate i believe that you the enemy team actively has to destroy it for it to go away which i think that's a good i wish i think that's a good progression in overwatch like we have ultimate now the enemy team gotta deal with before they can actually um for the actually um take out your team because also the tree of life can also be used as cover as well so because the enemy team can't shoot through the tree of life the tree of life gotta be destroyed before they can start shooting you so you can use the tree of life as natural cover which if done right i believe can make some great plays with it so yeah that is life weaver ultimate and time to discuss life weaver passive parting gift which is you drop a gift of health that the enemy or ally can pick up. So if an enemy manages to kill you, they can pick up they can pick up that health pack you leave behind after you die. Or your teammate can pick it up. And this health pack gives your teammate, I mean gives your um gives your teammate or opponent 250 health, I believe. So this ability can either hurt your team or it can help your team it depends on who gives it get it if the enemy gets it the enemy basically gets a reaper a reaper um or from the old days of overwatch where if reaper killed killed the opponent they will leave a soul or behind he could have used so now so now it basically that but either your enemy can get it or your allies can get it after you die so it seems like a decent passive but at the same time it could work against you at the same time because the enemy can pick it up or your ally can pick it up it depends who gets it and did they do anything with it basically so parting gift i don't really want to say it's a game changer though but i say it can increase or decrease your chance of winning it depends on what enemy gets it and what they what enemy gets or what ally gets it so I can kind of say it don't it ain't gonna have a too huge effect on, on the outcome of the match, but it could potentially have it could potentially can have an outcome on the, on the match. You don't never know in Overwatch. Overwatch is such a random game sometimes that some game you should have won, you end up losing. So you really can't tell with Overwatch being yeah, with you. So I get parting gift is just a decent passive. So ain't really nothing too crazy. I really won't say anything too crazy, but hey, you never know. Now that we got through discussing Life Weaver's ability, now let's discuss the Season 4 Battle Pad, which I really can't find too much on it online. Like, I had to go through, look, look at it, and see what kind of skins they got. I couldn't really see the skin, so I already know like the general theme of this Battle Pad, which is, is Star Wars themed. Like it literally called Star Watch. What else? What else is supposed to be referencing besides Star Wars? So yeah, the battle pad gonna be Star Wars theme, I believe. And for the most part, I think the this this um this battle pad got some really great skins. I saw some on YouTube where the dude was revealing the battle pads. I think the skin for the most part looks all right. I think they even look better than some of the season three, which I think season three had some good skin, but I really think. This one have better skin than season three to be honest with you. So the season four battle pass look look more better than season threes, but at the same time, season three was alright as well. Cause season three, I be honest with you, was one of the first actually good battle passes. So now we got another battle pad which will include the new hero at will. So if you buy the battle pass, everybody know you get instant access to the new hero if you don't want to pay for the battle pass. You're gonna have to grind up to like level 40 something, like level 45 to unlock the new hero, try them out. And everybody knows the new hero is not gonna be available for like, I don't know, like the first four months, the first four weeks of comp uh, oh, the new Overwatch season. So you ain't gonna be able to play him in competitive right off the bat. So you ain't you gonna try him out like in casual games, stuff like that. So yeah. So by the time, so by the time, um, 
by the time he be unlocked for competitive, everybody should, just about everybody should be at that level where they should have him, or at least should be at that level, or almost at that level where they should have him. So, yeah, the season four battle pass don't look too bad. I don't think it, it, it's, it's a bad battle pass at all. It's not a bad battle pass, to be honest with you. Especially that mythic skin. That mythic skin look kind of sick. Like, dude, that Sigma skin look awesome. Like, dude, holy shit. I swear to God, dude. I think that skin is like one of the... Beside the Kiriko skin, I think the Kiriko skin... I think the Kiriko skin is a little bit better than the Sigma one. But the Sigma one isn't really too far behind. So, yeah, the yeah the Sigma skin looks sick. But anyway, before I sign off and end the video, I like this. I like to um, mention these two game modes come to Overwatch 2 Season 4. The first game mode is called Bob and Weave Game Mode. Another game mode coming in May 9th is Star Watch Limited Time Event. So these gonna be the new they gonna be the two new exclusive limited time game modes you can play at these at these um specific date. Because the Bob and Weave game mode starts at April 11th and the Star Watch game mode starts at May 9th. So look out those, look out for those game modes as well. But anyway, guys, that basically it for the season four Overwatch two. I went over um Light Weaver kit. I went over the battle pass, and I mentioned the two game mode you can have access to on April 11th and May 9th. So that basically it for the uh, season four Overwatch two update. So anyway, if you enjoyed the video, make sure make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Ring the notification bell. And leave a comment but beside that anyway y'all have a great day see you later peace